Welcome in. It is day 150 and you're speaking to the Meeples Champion. Today, we're going to be jumping into the game that, for me, truly kicked off my love of the trick-taking games. Now, you can go back to, of course, hearts and spades and all of that stuff. But for me, those games never really fully grabbed me. I didn't play them a lot as a kid. I kind of discovered them a little bit more like on and off through high school and college. I never got really into them. But the game that got me was just after college when me and my friends played Wizard. Now, Wizard is your standard deck of 52 cards, but then you get along with that four Jesters and four Wizards. The idea is, is that you shuffle up your deck. Now, depending on total number of players, depends on how many rounds you play. You shuffle up your deck. You start first round with one card apiece. After dealing each card around, you flip the last card over on top of the deck, and that determines the trump suit for the round. Now, if that trump suit turns out to be flipped and it is a wizard or a jester, a jester means there is no trump suit, and a wizard means that the dealer gets to choose the trump suit, including the option of there is no trump suit. Then, everybody at the same time has to pick what they're going to end up deciding is their number, and you're going to end up all at the same time revealing. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can do all at once, or you can do that one by one, you go around and everybody does it. We kind of very, went back and forth on that as to what we were deciding on doing. We, for the most part, actually chose to do it as left of dealer is going to reveal, and then one by one you do it. So the final person had the advantage of, I know what they've all claimed, I can make a claim based on that. If I was unsure if I could hit two in a round of five cards, well, only two were picked, I can definitely get two now. So you get a little option there. So then, starting at first person left of dealer, they will lead a card. If you have the same suit, you have to play it unless you choose to play a wizard or a jester. If you play a jester, you simply dodge. If you play a wizard, then the person who played the very first wizard will win the entire trick, and it doesn't matter who plays what after you. However, if the first person to play plays a jester, they pass it on to the next person and they are going to choose the suit. And if they play a jester, it continues to pass. There's only four jesters, so if you're playing a three or a four player game, there is the opportunity that it'll be a jester all the way around, at which point whoever played the first jester wins the trick. So you make your choice and then you go in, you try to hit your number. If you hit your number, you're going to end up getting a, I believe it's a 20 point bonus for hitting the number and then 10 points for every single trick you got. And then if you miss it, then you're going to end up losing 10 points per trick that you missed by. Zeros don't matter. They're the same concept, you know, up or down by tricks made. And at the end of the game, however many players determines total number of rounds, you can play three to six players. I think in a six player game, it's 10 rounds. No, that's not right. Maybe six players is going to end up being, because you're going to have, no, that's right, 10 cards. Because in a six-player game, you'll actually have exactly 60 cards. So six players, you'll end up going for six rounds. But depending on number of players, you go through, you have to figure out what you're looking for for number of rounds. If you do have that six-player count, there is no last card to flip in the last round, because all of them are dealt. So that's a big deal. However, Anything less than that means that the final round there will be enough for an additional card to be flipped, and you'll always have a trick suit in the last round. It's a fun game. For me, it's a game that was just played so many times. We played this game in the hundreds, maybe even in close to a thousand times between all of us playing in that group for probably about a five to six year span. It was just a really popular game that always filled in the cracks every week. That being said, why don't we jump into our seven categories and see where this really lands for us. When it comes to that art, I love this game, but its box and its cards do nothing to help its case. It's not a good art. It doesn't really sell me on it. It's very bland. It's gotta be a thumbs down. When it comes to those components, the components are the cards. You have your sheet that you fill in, but it's the cards. And it's a perfectly fine deck. There's no complaints about it, so I'm going to give it a thumbs up. 
your price. Now, this one is a little bit bigger of a box. There are also regular sized 52 card deck boxes for this. The reason this is bigger is because this one came with actual trackers. It's supposed to track. You can determine what you're going to be bidding, and then you show it in front of yourself, and everybody knows where you are. Uh, it was cool. I picked up just because we'd played so much, and I had worn out a couple decks. Uh, but I actually used the trackers for a different trick-taking game that I felt needed them more. Uh, that being said, when it comes to your price, I mean, the availability of this is you'll find it in Barnes & Nobles. You'll find it in your targets. You're going to find it in most board game stores. You're going to find it online. It's out there. And it's not as expensive. If you're just looking for the basic deck, which is all you need, you can get that for like 12 bucks. It's a big thumbs up. Your difficulty. So difficulty is a little tough. It all depends on what your group's doing. My group, for the most part, was told that we were playing a variable of it, and it wasn't the original version. But we all loved it, so we had no complaints. But you have to make sure you're playing with the right group. Everybody's on the same page. There's no confusion there. As long as everybody's on the same page, I don't care if you're playing the original version of this game or if you're playing a variation of this game. As long as everybody knows the rules consistently as the group, you're fine. As far as the difficulty went with this, I didn't think it was that difficult. It was pretty easy to pick up, and it was all about just strategizing not only for your own hand, but understanding what cards could be out there, you know, what you, know, you, you think you're going to dodge because you don't have any wizards and you have very low trumps, and all of a sudden you realize, yeah, I was in a round where there was six of us and there were four cards in our hands, and I had the one, the two, and the three of trumps, so I figured I'd easily lose. And then it turns out nobody else even has trump, you win three cards you didn't expect to win with at all. It can be tough sometimes, but in general, I think that the game is there for you to be able to make a rough estimate and be able to be really in the ballpark if you know what you're doing. So I think the difficulty is acceptable. It's a thumbs up. Replayability. This game is all about replayability. I play, we play this game on a regular basis, somewhere in the range of like three to four times a night on our, on our weekly Saturday get togethers. That being said, it was a weekly game. It was a monthly game. It was a multiple times in a night game. This was a game that we were playing. If, if you were getting together 50 times in a year for every single week, we were playing at close to 200 games minimum a year. Replayability is there especially if you're with a game group that stay, hangs out for a good amount of time and likes those in-between games. So for me, big thumbs up. Keys to victory. This is where it gets tough. It's about your placement. If you're the first to go, then you're going to end up being making a decision without a lot of knowledge. If you're last to go, then you might have felt confident or not confident about your hand, and now you're on the flip side. There's no way I can win any of these cards, and then you get zero, 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 and you go, uh, everybody bids zeros. Can I win with one or two of these cards, or should I bid zero? You don't know where you are. It's a tough one. I think that it's definitely one that is... There's keys to victory, and nothing's forced on you. You just have to be able to really adjust and take the hits, because a lot of times in this game, what you find is, is that somebody starts off, and in the first three rounds, they've jumped in points, they're the big leader, and then they just drop. And by round six or seven, they're way below. And then all of a sudden, they make two crazy claims in round eight or nine, they're now right there, and they're like, oh, I'm only ten points behind, I can win. So it's about being able to take the hits, because the likelihood is you're not going to often just keep winning. So you have to be able to mitigate your losses by being able to figure out all right, if I'm not sure, where can I make a bid that's going to be reasonably close so that if I don't make an obvious bunch of wins or an obvious bunch of losses, I can get pretty close to my number. Hopefully hit it, but if I miss it, only by a 10-point hit. So that's, that's your best chance there. So overall, I think I'm going to give it the thumbs up because the keys to victory have option. It's just a little tough. unique. When I first played the game, I would have yelled unique and I would have been wrong because it is like hearts. It is like spades. It is like scheming and skulking. It is like so many of these trick takings. We just, I just introduced Tournament of Camelot not, not that long ago. There are loads of trick taking games. 
And well, it's, it's actually pretty basic compared to those. So it's a great intro game because it's not too complicated with its additionals. But that just also means that whenever you think trick-taking, everything competes with this. You know, this is your starting point, and then you kind of branch out from here. So you might say, well, Tournament at Camelot and Scheming and Skull Kick are two different games. And I don't want to play this or th compared to that. I want to play one or the other. But you could compare both of them to Wizard, so it competes with them both. Because the base elements from those are from that. But the additional elements that they bring to the game are unique to themselves. So this is not unique. Thumbs down. Overall, what do I think? If you're a trick-taking fan, buy this game. If you're not a trick-taking fan, but you and your friends love to get together and you always have time for a couple small games, buy this game. Overall, I think it's worth your money, it's worth your time, but that's up to you to make the decision and see what kind of games you and your group truly love. Well, it has been day 150, and we've been speaking about the game Wizard. And you've been speaking to the Meeples Champion. Like, share, subscribe, and check down below in the description where I'll be adding in an Amazon link in case you want to get this game for your collection. Until next time, I'll talk to you tomorrow.